how these products get traded in the security markets and, um, and what that might mean from a business uh, perspective. Um, before we let's talk about the investment banking arena, which is where companies work with a certain type of, bank, of banker, not ones that help them loan or borrow loans for their uh, operations, but the banks that help them interact with the financial markets to issue bonds, um, to get to, to sell commercial paper, or to issue equities. There's typically the primary market where the company itself sells products into, into the marketplace to raise capital. We were using Starbucks. Starbucks wants to raise some capital to expand into another country. They might issue a series of bonds or they might issue a bond offering of say $20 million. They might issue that through an investment bank who then goes out to all their clients and gets their clients to buy these $100,000 bonds. Um, there's a lot of them if they're getting, if they're raising $30 million. Um, what would that be? 30 million, 100,000, 300 of them. So they go out and try to find 300 people to buy these, uh, these bonds. Um, and uh, 30 of them. No, that'd be 30 million. Uh, yeah, three, uh, 300 of them. They go try to find people to buy these bonds. Um, that's the primary market. Now, once I own a bond or a stock, this could be the same as stock. I want to sell some stock and the primary market is to go sell them. Um, but the bankers also manage a market where they sell, if I bought one of those Starbucks shares, I can sell it to somebody else, right? And that's the secondary market where Starbucks is not involved at all. I have a bond of theirs and I sell it to somebody else. And that other person uh, then owns that and gets the dividend checks and all of that. And that's managed through the, the brokerage houses or when the sale is taken, the transaction information is transferred into uh, the process of, uh, of issuing those dividends and paying off the balance, the, the principal. And that's, second, that's the secondary markets. And investments, investment bankers are the ones that manage and underwrite, as they say, that, that whole process of, getting, uh, of bringing capital to market from its primary source, which is the firms, the companies, the enterprises, Starbucks, Apple, whatever. Um, and they then open up the financing. They have access to the capital. They are in once and done. They go in, they sell it, they sell from their treasury into the marketplace. They get the money they want to go do their projects. Once those assets are in the marketplace, they get bought and sold on the secondary markets. The stock exchanges that we talk about um, are these secondary markets. And there are also exchanges like this for the bond market, for treasury bills, for all sorts of different uh, for currency, all sorts of things are secondary markets for those being traded. But the, but the actual financing itself happens in the primary market initially to get the money into the company to move forward. So that's how that process works. Securities markets are these mechanisms for buying and selling stocks and bonds. They provide liquidity. They also provide pricing. So you know how much this is worth, whether people are willing to buy a Starbucks bond for 100, 000, worth $100,000 with a coupon of 5%, 5% of it being paid every year to the owner. Coupon rate 5%, $100,000 unsecured bond that Starbucks puts out. Is there a market there? What, what interest rate is the right market? Is 5% too high or is it too low? When will people buy it and sell it? And that affects um, how much they'll pay for it. That those marketplaces and who's willing to buy and sell is what determines what those values ought to be. And the investment bankers are in there figuring out all of those numbers. Without this liquidity, it would be very difficult to raise money. You wouldn't know what the rates were and it would be hard to find buyers if you think about it. Stock markets do the same thing. We're just saying with that with bonds, but they do it with equities. The two biggest U.S. stock markets, New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ market, um, both exchange public information, publicly traded companies. Uh, they're also both profit for profit companies. Now with electronic trading, this all happens extremely quickly. Uh, buying and selling in various lots with large numbers and huge amount of volume on a, on a given basis 
Um, historically, NASDAQ was always traded electronically, but in the New York Stock Exchange, there were actually physical trading going on on the floor down in Wall Street, but now it's by and large a, a, um, a, also electronically traded. Uh, again, this is third parties trading back and forth. The company itself is sort of out of the deal. When you buy Apple stock, Apple has nothing to do with it. You're buying from someone else that wants to sell their Apple stock to you, and you buy it back and forth. Apple doesn't really have anything to do with it. You're just buying and selling those, um, those rights to ownership of Apple. That's why it's called public. It's open to the public. Anyone can buy it. Over-the-counter markets, which you might hear about, they buy and sell to each other via telephones and teletype machines and I have people in Los Angeles that have stock and I have people, someone else has people, has stock in Long Island and they want to buy and sell back and forth. They have this, this network of people that they know who will buy and sell things. That's why there's a bid ask price and you, you say you want to sell something or you want to buy something. They find someone who's willing to do it as a bid ask and then you close the transaction. And now many of the corporate bonds are sold um, in this kind of a, of a process, this over the counter thing that, that occurs. So that's, uh, that's another way that these markets are made. It's called making the market. And we typically measure these kinds of this, all this activity, which you could imagine is chaos, confusion, lots of facts, lots of details. We manage that with performance measures, and certain indexes that give you a sense as to on average how things are going. An index is a bunch of companies that are put together in a particular industry. So you can watch how that industry is trading. Is it getting more valuable or less valuable? Are healthcare companies doing better or worse? That's an index. Healthcare, industrial, transportation, technology, that sort of thing. And then average is general average of prices over multiple companies, often a weighted average depending upon the price of the stock or the size of the company. Um, so you get a sense when someone quotes the New York, the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average or whatever, what you're doing is you're measuring um, the sense of a group of stocks on average to give people a, a general feeling of how well the overall market is doing. Is it getting, are stocks on average getting better or higher or are they getting lower or smaller? What is going on with that in that particular story? So these markets out there, if you trace it back and you think about it, all of the market pricing and the decisions that are being made and these trades that are occurring um, across all of these companies and all of these organizations and all these possible investors, all that is tracked back to the fact that in the individual company, we're keeping track in a common language of this with these, that includes this money that's being, that's measured and the money that is able to store value. We have information specifically about what that measurement is for these various companies. We're keeping track of, uh, of what those numbers mean, and we can compare what's happening in one company to another because of our accounting friends who, who do that so carefully. And then there's outside auditors that make sure that what they're saying is accurate and you can trust it, and the information is all shared publicly. All of that comes together to allow this transparency of what's happening in the commercial environment comes together to allow this uh, this trading and this um, this allocation of capital at these rates that people are comfortable with and they can compare one to another. Because of that, I'm able to get capital to invest in my long-term projects in my company. I'm able to get it at rates that are fair, that people that I feel good about because I can get the money. People feel good because they feel they're going to get the right returns and they can compare my investments with somebody else's investments and decide who gets the money at what rate all made possible by the fact that we have all of this information that's being um, being developed and supported in this transparent manner. And that's the underlying value that the markets provide for our financial management. And this all comes from our ability to have accounted for with this double entry bookkeeping in a fair and even and honest and com comparable way how much, how these transactions or how this money flow within the company is being used by, by, the, by the organization to make more profits going forward. All of that sort of comes together in that marketplace. So that's the end of the discussion on the financial markets and how they, how they help support what it is organizations are trying to accomplish 
and it allows them to have the capital they need to grow their businesses, to innovate, and to come up with these new and exciting products going forward and do it in a way that is sustainable and allows all of their investors to make profits going forward. So we'll close with that and um, we'll see you at our, our next, in our next discussion. Take care.